In this video, we're going to take a look at a custom HTML document that I made. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to go over another HTML document. Now, after I released the video yesterday, there was a comment asking to show more. So, in that last video, I talked about some of the different things you could do, such as include detailed drawings and simulation and cam data, but I didn't actually show it. So, this morning I made a sample assembly. I've got uh, some external components, some internal components, some simulation, cam data, setup sheets, drawings, and we're going to take a look at an HTML document that contains all of that. So to get started, I'm going to hop into Fusion 360, and I'm just going to show you the various pieces of this. So we have a detailed drawing that contains a first sheet with an assembly, balloons, and a parts table. The parts table was exported as a CSV. As a second sheet that includes some dimensions, we have an assembly which has externally linked components, the link and the dog bone, and has an internally created component called base. This has an animation, so we can see an animation that plays. The dog bone component has a cam setup, and inside of here we have four tool paths. The NC program has a setup sheet that lets us know where the coordinate system is, the tools that are being used, the tool paths, and so on. And the link has simulation data. So there's a simulation that shows uh, various simulation results. You can see that we have stress. And in here, we can dictate whether we're looking at safety factor, or stress, or strain, or displacement. And we're not going to have all of these options when we look at these in an iframe, but we do have a lot of them. So in addition to that, I have a Word document that I created. And just like we did in our last video, I simply copied the iframe share link from the web and the A360 link for each of these. So I've got them for all the components. I've got it for the setup sheet, the detailed drawing. And then I created this table at the bottom. I copied the CSV from Excel that I exported for my drawing. And I put it here and I did modify a few things. I moved the descriptions over and added the part numbers. It's all stuff you can do in Fusion, but um, I just did it here. So let's go ahead and take a look at this HTML sample document. So that way we can understand a little bit about uh, the functionality, maybe where some limitations are, but some of the things that we can do with this. So the first one is our assembly. And just like our example yesterday, you can see that we can very easily rotate this around. We can use tools like measure and we can figure out things like um, distances between different pivot points, or we can you know, measure dis different aspects of the design. You've got the model browser, which we can expand. We can look at individual components and, and identify those. But we also have this animation option. So the animation option is pretty cool because it lets us play through the storyboards that we created. Now, one issue that I found, at least with this iframe size, is that the keyframes and the timeline end up directly behind the rest of our tools. So that obviously is problematic. We can still hit play but I haven't found a way that I can actually move this around. We can uh, you know, sort of click behind here and get to different positions and we can go back to previous keyframes, but at least the play button is here. And note again that we have things like the document browser, we can turn on a section analysis and uh, we can look through the different parts. There's a lot of things that we can do directly inside of here. So we can turn that on and off we can go back to, um, we can use a box to identify different areas, or we can go back to the design itself. So that's a quick look at what animation looks like. Now, keep in mind that when you have a design, you can have an animation, a simulation, you can have cam data, you can have all of that associated with one assembly. But I did this with separate ones simply because I wanted to explore the different options so we weren't overwhelmed with each of them. The next one is the detailed drawing. And in this one, I actually swapped out the iframe with the A360 link. So you can download the drawing as a DWG or a PDF. I didn't really add much information to this drawing, but again, we do have some data here. We can navigate between the different sheets. We can take a look at the parts list. 
And again, we can download the entire thing as a DWG or a PDF or even a Fusion 360 archive file. Now drawings will be an F2Z file and the Fusion archive files are ones that you can basically only open up with Fusion. But the 3D designs, I kept the iframe links so there is no download option here. This next one here, we've got again the design. You can see the link. We can identify the design and focus in on certain aspects or we can show the simulation model. Now, I only have one simulation study in this design, but if we had multiples, we could select them from there. We can decide whether or not we want to look at safety factor, stress, displacement, or strain. We don't have reaction force in here. And then with each of these, we don't actually have the option in here to modify which stress we're looking at. So uh, in, in Fusion 360, we can do like first and third principle, we can do um, those in different directions, X, Y, and Z, but we only, we only have this von Mises stress option when we're looking at it in the browser. But just note that um, you do have the view here. We can see everything. We can identify and zoom in on different areas. It shows that I added bearing loads to these two bosses. This was fixed or it had a pin constraint on it. Um, and, and again, you do have all these other options to measure, section analysis, and so on. You can see the simulation results are displayed here. We can go back to the design as well. As we go down, the next one, this dog bone here, has the cam data associated with it. And of course, it says one. I've only got one setup. But we can select the setup. We can see everything. We can see all the tool paths and the tools that were used. Or we can take a look at setup one. We can expand, and we can pick each individual tool path. So if we expand this further, we can see the tool. We can see where the coordinate system is located, and we can see the size of the toolpath, which will show us the actual, the lead-ins and the lead-outs and the cutting moves. So again, this data can be very helpful, uh, especially if you're trying to convey something specific. And of course, you can add text underneath here. It is an HTML document, but we, we just need to do a little bit of HTML coding or just understand the way in which the information gets conveyed in order to make that work. So as we go down, the next thing that I included here was the setup sheet. Now it was from my NC program. If you do this in Fusion 360, doing it from an NC program is probably the best way. They, uh, they do tend to change that functionality, but the uh, posting and setup sheets that used to be done about a year ago, that's getting probably phased out and you're gonna be doing it from NC programs. So uh, I would suggest if you do CAM data and CAM programming, you go to create an NC program from the setup menu and then you just simply right click on it to create this. But in here in the browser, we can go through and we can take a look at um, simply capturing each of these and then we can also print it out. You can save it to PDF or you can simply print it to your local printer. Now the cool thing about this is that um, a setup data is automatically saved to the data panel. So when you wanna pass that along to somebody, if you're working in um, a industry or a shop or wherever, where you're the one that's programming parts and then you're handing it to a machine operator, you typically will hand them a sheet of paper and probably a flash drive with uh, the NC program on it, depending on you know, how technologically advanced your setup is. Um, a lot of machines are now working on direct connections to the CAM solution, or um, you might have your machines hooked up to the network. But uh, unless you're going way, way back, uh, at the very least, you have a flash drive that you're plugging into your controller of your machine. So when, when you transfer that, you also would transfer a setup sheet. So uh, the operator will know where the coordinate system is and what tools are being used and also um, you know information about things like the stock size and the part size and so on but if you have a uh, an html document that you create that you can you know email or, or host then you could send the part with the cam data so they can see the tool paths that are supposed to be running you can understand the order of operations, the tools, the setup sheets right here. Uh, so it's a pretty neat way to put both of those together. And last at, at the bottom, I pulled out the iframe text data, but I left the bolded headers and the A360 links to all of these as well. Now, the main reason I just left these in here is because these A360 links do have the download option turned on currently. 
but uh, you know, it's just another way to maybe include that information. You can either swap that out with the A360 link so that they can download it from the HTML document. You can put it in here. And then you can see the parts table at the bottom. Now, I do want to add some words of caution. I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. And I want to hop back into the Word document, the original Word document. If you decide to add more information to this, so if you come in and you come back to Word and you uh, wanna add some more text or something like that, and you resave it as an HTML document, all of the work that you did to get that iframe data and all that other stuff in there is going to be overwritten. So it's important that you try to add everything at the very beginning um, or that you have some sort of basic understanding of HTML coding to make that work. Because otherwise, all of the, all the text, the table and the notes and the things that you added to the Word document will still be there. But all of the iframe data that we manually added in our example yesterday, all of that stuff will get overwritten, unfortunately. Um, now, that's just a product of the way that saving the Word document as an HTML document is. Uh, this data is just going to be, you know, sort of pulled out. Uh, if you want to save that, then I would suggest that you make a copy of it or do a save as copy. So this right now is our HTML document. And again, we have this sort of P class MSO normal that happens after the body of the document. I am going to copy this and I'm going to try to stick it before the A frame. So I put it in there before the A frame. I'm going to save this document and I'm going to close it. Now, before I do anything else, I'm also going to hop back into Fusion 360 and I'm going to make a change to my detailed drawing. So in this first sheet, I'm going to add another view. So I'm just going to take this, uh, let's make it a half scale. And I'm just going to stick a side view of the same assembly over here and I'm going to save that drawing. Now, the reason I'm doing these two things is I want to show that one, if we save or make changes to our Fusion files, that the HTML document will update. And I also wanted to show what happens if we try to add some text into our HTML document. So now you can see at the very top, a bolded assembly is displayed before this iframe. So adding the text, if you just, again, put it in the initial Word document, anything that you think you might want, if it's a table, uh, if it's some sort of formatting that you want for the font size, put all of that in there. That way you can see the HTML code that's used in order to create that or capture that data. Then let's go down and let's take a look at the detailed drawing. You can see that extra view that we put in there is now there on sheet one. So that detail updated because all of these HTML documents are either referencing the A360 download link or they are referencing the iframe data, which goes to the 3D model. And that's, even though the, the detailed drawing is 2D, that's the same thing. As long as they're up to date, then that'll be the case. Now, remember with the detailed drawing, we have this download link option. So next, let's go, let's close that. And I'm gonna go back to my share link for the assembly drawing. And if I go into the share link, I'm gonna turn off allow viewers to download to their computer. Now, when I turn that option off, theoretically, the HTML document should update so that we're no longer allowing anybody to download. You can see that the assembly document, the A360 link is still allowing that download. So if we wanna fix this, we actually have to deactivate the share link in this case for this assembly. So if we go into share, and we turn the, uh, the share link off, you can see that this item is turned off. And if we reopen that HTML document, I think the drawing share link should break, but you can see that it's actually still working. So this could be a potential problem that we wanna make sure that we, uh, we identify and understand that typically with the Fusion 360 download links, once you make a change to the download option or you deactivate it, then uh, that is no longer available to be downloaded. If I were to come in here to my detailed drawing and I click on that um, and I try to go to the web, you can see here that it is opening for me. Now, one of the reasons why this happens is the fact that I'm logged into Teams. I, I am logged in with my account. I am the owner of this design, so it is letting me do this. So theoretically, if 
I was not logged in and I was not the owner of this design. This should go away and this entire thing should go away as well. That's something if you decide to use this functionality that you should definitely test out. Either log yourself out of uh, Fusion Teams, log yourself out of Fusion 360, and or send it to somebody that doesn't have an account or another computer that doesn't have an account and just test out that functionality because the last thing that you wanna do is, is put something out there that, uh, in this case, like a download link that cannot be undone. So keep that in mind. That is another thing that you should consider. Um, just, just to be careful with these links and the data that you wanna share um, if it happens to be external. There are ways in Fusion Teams where you can manage projects and you can add members that are viewers only, especially if you use the manage extension and you use it more like a PDM system, then you do have some control over who has access to those different data sets. The last thing that I want to do with, uh, with this HTML document is I wanna show you how we can actually add to it. So we have our Word document. The original Word document, this is not the one that's saved as an HTML, it's just an actual Word document. But let's say that I wanted to maybe make some additional changes to this document. I wanted to potentially add another table for something or add some more text. Remember I mentioned that if we save this as an HTML, if we save it as the same name, then what's gonna end up happening is it's gonna overwrite our data. We're gonna lose all the work that we did setting up those iframes. So the main thing that I would suggest is that you potentially have two documents going. If you want to figure out how to do something in HTML, then do it in a document like this. Let's say that we wanna insert a three by two table. I'm gonna call this new parts table and let's say concept one, uh, concept two, and let's say that maybe all this text at the top is bold. And then let's say, um, new idea, I'm just gonna put a one and a two in here, okay? So now I'm gonna do a save as. I am gonna save this as an HTML document, and I'm just gonna call this testing after the, afterwards. So HTML document testing. So now if I try to open that up, I'm gonna go into Notepad again, and I'm gonna open that document up. Again, make sure that we set it to all. Open this one up. All of the iframe data is gonna be gone, uh, all the functionality that makes this actually work, but this new table is added at the bottom and it's inside of the brackets. It starts with table and it ends with table. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy that. So control C or go to edit and copy. Then I wanna open up my actual HTML document. So this is going to be my HTML sample. I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom I'm gonna go after the last table. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stick it in here and I'm just gonna paste that new table and save this HTML document. So now let's go ahead and open up that, that sample. Now this should have maintained all of these iframes that we created, the drawings, the setup sheet and so on. And now our new table is at the bottom. So again, keep in mind that if you're using this method and you have no HTML coding, like me, I, I don't really have any experience coding in HTML. I've played with it, but very, very cursory, basic level knowledge. Then make sure that you do all your formatting, all your adding text, all of that, just do it in Word. And if you have your just a, a sort of a sandbox or a play document, you can save that as an HTML and just copy the text and put it into the one you're working on. And this is also true if you come up with a format that works, if you have a layout of different size for your designs and adding uh, detailed drawings, then you can also do a save as of that HTML document. And then whenever you have a new design, you can simply just copy your iframes or your A360 links and put it into that template. So that way you're always sort of using the same layout. So that's, that's true if you spend some time and you create things like borders or tables or you add uh, data for frames on these, that you spend the time to do that. I don't really have any other tips for you on this. This was just sort of an additional document that I wanted to talk about uh, because we did have the request in the comment of the video that wanted to kind of see some additional functionality that we could do with this. If you have any other additional questions or there's something else you wanna see or try to explore, I'm, I'm happy to dive into it. Again, I have little to no HTML coding experience, 
but with these resources, just using a Word document saved as an HTML and pulling out the data from the share links in Fusion 360 Teams on the web, you can also create documents like this. Uh, if you do end up using these for something or you find a new use for it, please let me know. I'm always interested to see what people do with this information. This is just an idea that I came up with last year and really I haven't put it into practice, but I thought I would share it and just in case somebody else has sort of a cool idea, something that they can do with this as well. So again, let me know if you have any questions. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.